Hello and welcome to all our radio entrepreneurs, listeners, and viewers. I'm producer Nathan Gobes, and I'm excited to introduce you to part three of the legal panel discussion for the record. In this spring edition of the panel discussion, which we've broken into three parts, we'll be covering topics related to coronavirus and the return to work, the importance of business agreements, family business, the impact of divorces and prenups, and much more. This episode is part three, of the, of, and this portion is going to be focused on the third of these topics, family business and the importance of divorces and prenups. If you have not yet seen parts two, uh, one and two of this discussion, we recommend you head over to radioentrepreneurs.com or any of our other channels to catch those previous segments. All of these discussions are intended to be highly relevant to business owners of all types, so be sure to follow Radio Entrepreneurs on LinkedIn, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Facebook, or any of the many other platforms we stream on. Next, I'll quickly introduce our three panelists and hosts for this discussion. For their full introductions, please refer back to episode one, which is linked in the description below. We are joined today by Mark Furman, director at Tarla Breed Hart & Rogers, Mark Swetchkinbaum, president of Mark Z Legal Staffing, and Melissa E. Sidney, partner at Tarla Breed Hart & Rogers. Welcome, Mark, Mark, and Melissa. Thanks, Thanks for being with to be here. here. Thanks for having us. Of course, last but not least, the man who you all know, Jeffrey Davis, uh, host of Radio Entrepreneurs and founder of Mage LLC. Welcome, Jeff. I'll hand the conversation over to you. Thank you very much. And already I give up. It's three against one. But I do have a question because this is my favorite segment. And, you know, Melissa and Mark F. Uh, Mark Z and I both come from family businesses. I don't know if you know that. Mark Z worked with his father. I worked with my father and I worked with my stepfather. For me, there were siblings involved. And, uh, you know, I have spent too much time in my career not focusing on the business aspects, but focusing on family aspects. And, uh, you know, it's very important that families understand that love and family does not make a business always. And I'm wondering what agreements have to be in place that are fair. I like the word fairness for me, fair for uh, family members in a family business, but also I think fair in terms of potential divorce, where there could be, you know, assets that are uh, in, in play in family business. So since the majority of businesses are owned by families, I think it's a fair way to go. What do they need? That's a great question, Jeffrey. And one thing that business owners should think about in the family context is number one, how it's going to operate during the lifetimes of the generation that starts a business, but also who's going to be involved from the next generation. What, what is the long-term plan for the business? Are they going to bring in all of the children or only some of the children? And when thinking about the succession plan, make sure that they're taking into account both those children who are working in the business and also those who decide to do something else. And one thing about family businesses is that in a lot of situations, the business itself is really what comprises a lot of the family's wealth. So from a estate planning perspective, it, you have to be creative about how you can treat each child equally and fairly, even if they aren't involved in business. I think having a, having a shareholder agreement or operating agreement that lays out certain principles and ways to resolve disputes are critically important because if you have five family members in the business who are uh, owners, you're gonna have at least five different opinions on some issues. And, uh, you know, not all, not, no one's gonna be able to be happy all the time. Who the leader is gonna be, you know, how many cases of that have we had over the years uh, where uh, uh, the founder has to make a selection about how the company is going to run, who has the ability to lead, how to do that without destroying the family. Jeffrey, that's where you've got to save the family while saving the business. Not a, an easy task, but, you know, planning for unpleasant events. Okay, there's four or three owners of a business. They're brothers and sisters and one of them dies so it does the agreement mean that their spouse of the deceased partner becomes the one-third owner uh, replacing the decedent how do the uh, siblings feel about 
having the spouse as the new, uh, one of the new sheriffs in town. Uh, you know, agreements, you know, solve these problems or address them, even if they don't always solve them to everybody's satisfaction. Planning for things that are unpleasant to think about. Disability, inability of a family member to perform adequately. How about misconduct by a family member that makes it necessary to remove that person from the business. How does that work? Who can decide? What are the financial implications? Families are, you know, I I think of them as businesses on steroids. They have all the problems of of a business, but they also have all the challenges and emotion of family embedded in them. And it makes it really, really challenging in some ways, much harder. Um, So um, those are my thoughts. Sorry, go ahead, Mark. No, I I, I was going to say, you know, Jeff talks about our history of being in family businesses. And one thing, like, as we've been recruiting um, with um, candidates that are, um, um, first of all, that are also have the alternative of their family business. So I've just had um, a few situations where candidates were looking at um, positions outside of their family, their law firm, where their father or mother was a partner, and it actually hurt their chances going in. And so they'll they'll go to their back to their family firm where the, the father and the mother is the partner. And a lot of times um, it's not a good situation either because other colleagues will will look at them differently because they're connected to a leader. So um, you've got to look at, at those situations in terms of incentivizing them if they're going to come back, in, especially if they're really competent. And a, um, a colleague of, of Jeff and mine that entered a family business on another situation, he was recruited by his father to come into the business to ultimately take over. And they had all these other family members part of it. And um, when it came time for him to take over, the father didn't want to give up control. So if they had an agreement in place, like Mark said, you could go to the agreement, they would honor it. Instead, what happened is, as Mark said, it's a balance between the business and the personal. Um, when the father, only when the father was on his deathbed, did they finally get together to finally have some closure, but it killed the relationship. So agreements are so key. I, you know, I, I, I give a different perspective and, uh, you know, I think things have to be clear. That's true. Uh, but life is sometimes a little bit more dynamic than agreements. Agreements are written based upon what happened yesterday, not what's going to happen tomorrow. And many times the oldest person goes into the business in, in, in my generation or the son. And then later on, uh, somebody else comes into the business, could be younger, could be a female, and they're more capable of running the business. They're really more destined to business leadership. They come out of a different training, maybe a career experience. I'm not saying it's always the case, but then the agreements were written prior to these people coming in and they're not reflective of the business today. And so they create a new conflict. So Melissa, I don't know how you feel about that. How do you, how do you adapt the agreements to be relevant to what's happening today and tomorrow? So I think an agreement is like any other plan. It needs to be revisited and make sure that it reflects the situation that you're trying to plan for. And I see this also in estate planning. And this is a way where we really see that business agreements work hand in hand with the state plans in that, you know, they need to be reviewed and updated every few years to make sure they do reflect the actual situation and also whatever is going on within the family and also within the law. Um, You know, I tell my clients, you should think of your estate plan needs a physical needs to be reviewed at a, every for an estate plan, I would say every three to five years. It's almost like a physical for your legal documents to make sure that everything is okay and make sure that everything is good. So to your point, Jeff, these do, these agreements are not something static that you could say, Oh, I did this 30 years ago and now I'm all set. Cause obviously situations do change. But equity, 
too. What happens when you lock equity in place and then the family dynamic within the business changes? That's harder to change, isn't it? Yes. And that's why you need a good team of advisors who can help you through it, through the legal and tax aspects of it, as well as through the emotional and family dynamic aspects. Because those are two different components. And um, what I try and tell my clients, just because something has a great tax or a legal result, it doesn't mean that it's the best option for this family because it may not work within the context of their family dynamics. So it is helpful having a team of advisors who can advise the family on a variety of different aspects related to these types of agreements. And I have been through who have been through so many situations over the decades of what can go wrong in families, family businesses. So, I mean, having, uh, you know, you can provide for, you know, if somebody leaves a business that there's a mandatory buyout, an optional buyout by at the discretion of the company. I mean, you can cater the agreement. You can figure out how, you know, in the event of an impasse, how it's going to be broken. Does it really require a lawsuit? You know, what what are alternatives? And there are many. So, um, but I absolutely agree that these agreements cannot be signed, put in a draw, and then only taken out 20 years later. It doesn't make any sense. I, I, I wonder, again, uh, and I, if this is maybe directed at Mark Z, maybe it's directed at all of you. Uh, you know, Mark, so many times you're helping people figure out what's their perfect fit for their career, what's the perfect fit for the employer. And if some of these issues are lurking in the background, you may be putting somebody in an unstable situation, which is never your intent. So I wonder what you can do to help people recruiting and for employers, or, or maybe it's just something you can't do. But I know it's, it's, it's a concern because the last thing, you know, I've seen a couple of people during COVID who took jobs, left secure jobs, and then in the middle of COVID, with all the fighting going on in some companies, they were left stranded again. And that's a problem too. And try to snuff out situations. We've had that. In fact, um, just on the phone with a candidate last night, who's um, considering and almost accepted an opportunity. And he's concerned with the stability and succession of the firm. And so it's important to snuff out knowing the, the players as much and obviously get as much information as you can in terms of the direction the company or the firm is going and making sure um, that's, a, that's gonna be a really stable environment where they're gonna have the platform. Conversely, um, we have candidates that will leave situations, and one of the big reasons why they're leaving is the um, the partners are splitting up. Um, there are issues with the partners. Um, in fact, a few situations where you had the husband and the wife practicing together, and they've had issues. Um, so definitely, those are leading um, to people making moves too. So absolutely, it's very important to, to um, again, have um, situations that are stable and that affect employment. Well, uh, you know, this has been an important series for all of us. I know Nathan's going to be coming back on now. And uh, I'm just wondering, you know, there's this whole thing with business changing litigation. Uh, it's very important to people understand the professional advisor's role is to build the strength and stability of organizations, families, and owners. And I'm wondering if all of you could just tell us how people could find you in this particular economy. Why don't we start with you, Mr. Furman? I can be reached at M Furman, F U R M A N, at T B H R dash law dot com or at 617 218 2025. Melissa? I can be reached at M Sydney, M S Y D N E Y, at T B H R dash law dot com or at 617 218 2031. Fabulous, Mark Z. How can people find you? Oh, wow. 
Flatterly gets you everywhere. First of all, just Google Mark Z, M-A-R-C, and the letter Z will come up, or markzlegal.com, M-A-R-C-Z-L-E-G-A-L.com, or 617-338-1300. Right. You know, these are important topics to everybody uh, because we would like to see stability and growth of the businesses, and businesses do change. The whole topic of litigation, stability of ownership, is something we will continue to look at on Radio Entrepreneurs. Nathan, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Uh, that wraps up the last segment of our spring edition of the Legal Show panel discussion for the record. Thank you to all our listeners and viewers who have tuned in for this uh, and all the segments of this panel discussion. Links will be provided in the video's description below for parts one and two if you didn't already hear them. So be sure to check those out and please click subscribe to the video if you're on YouTube or follow if you're listening on one of our pl uh, podcast platforms to stay up to date on all our postings and it really helps, helps our channel grow. Radio Entrepreneurs is also highly active on LinkedIn. So be sure to follow our page there as well for more business advice and discussion. Until next time, goodbye and thanks for listening. We'll be back with more stories on Radio Entrepreneurs.